Hey, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. After its big reveal at Lightbox Expo a few weeks ago, Procreate 5 is just around the corner, with features like CMYK support and a brand new brush engine. The feature I'm most excited for though, which I previewed for you shortly at Lightbox, is their more robust animation tools. And thanks to their closed beta, I want to show you the new tools in more detail and do some character animation. There are other applications that try to tackle animation or are used in more traditional pipelines, but there's a few reasons why animation in Procreate is such a big deal, especially to me. For one, it's that same factor that makes people rebuy games on the Nintendo Switch that they already owned elsewhere. Being able to take it with you is a big deal. Second, for me, Procreate is the app I'm already using on a daily basis, and so to have new tools delivered to that interface, that brush feel, and that experience that's hardwired into my brain at this point, I'd rather have a few little things in the ecosystem that I'm familiar with than a ton of tools on an alien planet of software. But leading into the third thing, it's not just a few little things. Kind of like what Nick said at Lightbox, when Procreate does a new feature, they usually knock the old one or another program's version of it out of the water. Real quickly in the current public version of Procreate 4 is the initial animation tool that they made available, an export as GIF preview and individual layer batch export. It always seems like I'm on a slightly different timetable than my friends over at Procreate. I made a video on comics in Procreate maybe a month before they added text. And just over a month ago, I had an earnest go at frame by frame character animation in Procreate, at least with version four. So now with the beta tools, I can show you how all the little difficulties that I ran into then are now a thing of the past. Right off the bat, in order to establish something as an animation, you wanna turn on the animation assist, which brings up this little bar. Now every layer or group of layers in your layers panel will act as a sequence from bottom to top and rearranging these layers rearranges the timeline. On the left is a play button with features that we can mess around with in a second. In the middle is our scrub along the total timeline, which lets you move between layers. And next is a really convenient new layer button, which creates the next layer and frame in the sequence. And then our settings, which are actually really robust. So already you have the ability to view playback without going to that little GIF export tool, which is great. But of course they didn't stop there. You can adjust the frames per second here, which is a holdover from the old feature. But now we also have onion skinning. Here you can adjust the amount of frames around the one that you're currently on to view and the opacity of those frames, which is an incredible feature. In the animation that I did that I'm about to show you, this feature was a lifesaver. You also have the playback option of playing once straight through, Ping pong, which if you're not familiar with, this is just kind of like those Instagram boomerangs playing forwards and back. And of course, looping, which this is what I'll be using the most just due to the nature of game animation. Now in my character animation video, one of the struggles I ended up with was needing to make everything that's visible in a frame visible at all other times. In other words, my character and the anvil was almost completely still for the whole animation, except for his arm but I needed to keep duplicating them and adding them to the next frames group, which was time intensive and could end up taking up more layers. Well, these aren't the only tools added for animation because as soon as you've turned on animation assist, you can select a layer and mark it as animation foreground or animation background. Not only is this great for traditional background and foreground elements like environments, but you can keep anything that doesn't move in your scene on just one of those two layers. There'll be a constant in your animation, and you can keep any reference you need in one of these layers, and they aren't affected by the onion skinning at all. I think the majority of people are going to be using the animation tools to enhance their illustrations, maybe adding a little bit of a line jitter effect because they're really big fans of Squiggle Vision and Science Court, or a small amount of motion or some simple actions. But there's no reason that you can't do something a bit more in-depth with the tools. So right now I'm going to do a little bit more character animation with them for you. I want to create a simple animation of my mascot character, the Wanderlumen, in a brisk little walk run, carrying the large staff that he usually keeps with him. So first things first, I want to get the mechanics of the run down. So your standard six frame Richard Williams, contact down, pass up, pass contact, and you're, you're good. And because of the onion skinning, I can refine this as I go and make sure that everything flows well with the loop feature. From here I add the rest of the body minus the back arm. 
It's not the most exaggerated, squashy animation, but it works for our purposes of just kind of experimenting with the tool. From here, I add the back arm, which I consider as something of a secondary animation. It's at least reacting to our run cycle, bobbing up and down. Now this arm is on a second layer. So to keep everything playing properly, I group each layer with its red arm counterpart. And there's a nice new combine down shortcut that lets you create groups easily. A third layer of reactionary animation is the lantern swinging and jostling on the end of the staff. This was great because I established the start, the end, and the middle positions, and then used the onion skinning to solve the in-between frames. With the sketches all good, I cleaned things up and refined them, and then went back with a new layer to create the inks, again onion skinning to make sure that everything stays relatively consistent. To fill in colors, I shot this little clip here, I just set each line layer to reference in order to quickly fill in the color. All in all, a really quick, fun experiment that only took me about 12 hours. Honestly, I can see Procreate being the primary tool that I use for animating our game going forward. It's intuitive, lightweight, and has all the things like liquify and quickline that make things easier as well. I can't wait for everyone to get their hands on Procreate 5 in the future because while tools don't teach you how to draw, they can really make the difference in getting things done. So folks, we're mighty close to the old 10000. Oh, if you haven't subscribed already. If this video is helpful for you, I'm making new ones every week about character design, visual storytelling, artistic mindset, and of course Procreate. If you'd like to keep my forge burning, you can do so over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen, and of course, follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at bageldenizen. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.